we have hit a little bit of a snag. Yeah. Okay. So today we're back in the workshop and we're gonna be looking at the Dewalt T-Stack toolboxes. So you might remember this T-Stack box here. We did this on our teaching an apprentice how to cut foam. Hi there. Click here and go and watch that video if you missed it. But we organized this, which is like the traditional T-Stack box. And we did this uh, with a yellow insert for a combi drill battery and a few other bits and bobs. But today we're gonna to be looking at their long handle variation. So uh, our T-Stack inserts, which we sell on our website in, in twin packs. These are available on next day shipping and it's 19.99 for a 30 mil pack or it's 24.99 for a 50 mil pack. That's including VAT and free shipping. And these slot directly into the T-Stack boxes, the normal style, as I said, or this long handle box as well. So the long handle box is a little bit taller and it's got like a top section here, which you can kind of put, um, you know, bits and bobs in. But today we're gonna to be organizing, or we're gonna be transforming the inside of this box. Now this box is in daily use, um, and it's actually from one of our uh, contractors that we've used to help us build the unit. And we've kind of, um, we've commandeered it from them and we're gonna transform it for them today. And we're gonna take out this tatty old polyurethane liner, which has come with it. And we're gonna upgrade it into some shadow foam. So a few of the different uh, bundles that you can buy from Dewalt um, come with a soft, I like I say, this is polyurethane, so it's not, not recyclable, it's very soft, and it's kind of, kind of got like a velvet top on it. The design might be suitable for some people, uh, but obviously it's, it's, I know it's not suitable for um, the person who's using this box because they've got like loads of extra stuff crammed in here. So with a shadow foam liner, we've got a blank surface, a blank canvas, to actually come up with a better, more efficient layout and also a more durable, long lasting liner. So we're gonna get rid of that. So in this toolbox, because we've actually got a fair bit of depth there, we've got 100 mil, it will actually take two of the T-Stack um, inserts, two of the 50 mil inserts. So we can have a base layer and then we can have a top layer. And obviously these little relief cuts on the side will allow us to lift that out nice and easy to access all of the tools underneath. And that way we'll be able to add even more tools into this box over and above what was already in there, which was just this stuff. So these thinner items like the walkie talkies, some of the multi-tool heads and bits, and some of these little adapters that go with multi-tool that you don't use very often can all be in the bottom layer. And in the top, we're gonna have the multi-tool, the charger, and the batteries. So it should be a really nice, efficient layout, and hopefully we can fit even more tools into this toolbox. So let's get these two inserts out of there, and we'll figure out a layout. So once we're happy with our layout, the next thing is to start cutting. So as mentioned, these inserts are available on our website, shadowfoam.com. Uh, they're available on next day shipping and a pack of two 50 mil inserts like this is $24.99. And we also have available our cutting packs. Now these also come free. So if you spend over 50 pounds on the website, you'll get a free cutting pack, which contains a scalpel, five blades. It also comes with a branded sticker and some instructions. And that's basically everything you need to cut the foam. These kits are also available to sold separately, as are the anti-cut gloves, which I recommend you get. In our full cutting kits, these anti-cut gloves are included in the full cutting kits, and they're the perfect kind of flexibility and give you that dexterity you need for cutting around the items. But obviously they are really good anti-cut gloves, so you aren't gonna nip your fingers. We're gonna cut the uh, multi-tool in first. And to do that, all I'm gonna do is line up this top edge and we want it to be at least 12 mil I'm going for here. I mean, eight mil is probably about the minimum from the edge to make sure you've got some nice rigidity in the foam and you're not getting the, wall, the sides of a cut too thin. So once we've got it where we want it, we just put a little bit of pressure on it to make sure it doesn't move. And then we're using the scalp with the blade on like a pencil. And we're just tracing around the item, making sure that the, the blade stays perpendicular to the foam or making sure it stays 90 degrees square to the foam all the way around. And we're not really worried about how deep we cut here. We're just looking to mark the profile, the shape of the item. Once you've gone all the way around, you can remove the item. And then when you press down on the foam, it reveals the cut that you've made. And then you can use that to just carry on cutting. And what you want to be doing here 
is cutting down to the finished depth that you're expecting to need. So with this, we've got a 50 mil liner and we, we can't cut down the full depth of the tool because obviously that would cut all the way through. The tool is deeper than 50 mil, but we want to cut and have this item nestled as deep in the foam as we can. So we're going to cut down 40 mil and peel all that back. So it'll just leave about 10 mil in the bottom. So we've, we've got a nice sturdy liner. We're not losing the, the strength of the item by cutting all the way through but we've got enough material removed so that we've got a really snug fit for the item. And obviously we're conscious that we want the lid of the tea sack to close. Right, once we've cut all the way around, it's easier to then remove the gloves. And we're just gonna peel back the top layer first. And we're just gonna go layer by layer make sure that we've got a nice controlled peel and we're not going to tear all the way through. So that's the top section removed. We'll move these out of the way so you can see. And all we're doing here is just starting one end, pushing our finger down the gap, the cut that we've made. And then there is some resistance. It doesn't peel like a banana. You do have to almost plow the foam out. So you're using your fingers to just chase along the peel. We don't want it to peel too easily because obviously it will delaminate over time. We want it to, once you've gone to all the effort of cutting and setting up your liner, we want it to last you for years. And that's why we make sure that the layers are bonded together strong enough to last you but not so strong that they won't peel at all. So there is a balance to be had. Okay, so that's the uh, the base layer peeled out and we've got about 10 mil left in the bottom. You can see that the last layer there came out in two parts, but the other ones came out, ended up doing three peels to get to the right depth. Chuck those out of the way. So let's just do a quick test fit. Yeah, that's perfect. That sits down nicely in there. Right, so for the finger pulls on the multi-tool, we're gonna use one of our stencils. Now we sell these on our website, these are $9.99 for the full set and basically what they are is just a stencil with metric holes from 10 mil up to 34 mil on this one and then it goes up to 50 mil on this and they basically just go up in increments of a millimetre. So they're really handy for something like a socket set, when you're trying to cut a row of sockets you can use these or we've also got this is a, one of them is the radius gauge, this comes in the set of three stencils. So if you're trying to make an insert for a flight case and you've obviously got radiuses on the corners, um, you can use this to make sure you're getting the perfect radius. You would just hold it on the corner, make sure it's right and then you can, you can cut that. We're going to use it however for the finger pulls today. So I reckon something that looks about what we're looking for is a finger pull size that kind of lends itself to putting a few fingers down the side to grab this out. So we want something a bit, I mean, for one item, for like a little Allen key, for example, we'd use a small hole, a little finger pull would be fine. But for this, we want something a bit decent, but then we also, we're working within this small little space here. So we don't want something too big that's gonna look a bit disproportionate. So I reckon about 44 mil looks nice, and then we'll do the same on the other side here. So we'll just center it in that gap. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And we just cut round it. before I cut the other side, I will remove that material so I can see. We're just cutting all the way down to the bottom to meet the last peel that we did. And that should just pull out nice and easy. Yeah, and then we're gonna do 44 mil on the other side. So we're gonna line it up. And we're gonna go about the same amount of overhang. That's great, we'll cut down there. That's perfect. So we'll do another quick test fit there. And that's perfect, and nice and easy to get in and out.
Okay, so that's the two liners done. We've managed to fit everything in the bottom liner. Uh, obviously all of this stuff was piled on top of each other before, so there was no way of having it all nicely accessible and laid out in one foam insert. What we've ended up with is the batteries we don't need finger pulls for because they just lift straight out. The multi-tool has got finger pulls and that comes out nice and easy. And the charger is sat there with loads of room around it and then it's got the cable underneath with the plug separately. So that's perfect for a top liner. Below we've got all of the multi-tool um, accessories basically. We've got all of the bits that go with it. Uh, plus we've got the guide, the Allen key, the little side guide and we've got the walkie talkies that were requested to be in this liner and a tape measure. So that gives us a really good, efficient, full toolbox, which is the aim. And if I put that base layer in there, so that fits in there just spot on, and then we'll put the top layer in. Close the lid, it should fit. Yeah, perfect. So that is a really efficient toolbox. I'm really happy with that. I think two layers, works really well here because the bottom layer is enough weight as well to stop the box from tipping. What you may have noticed is while I've been filming this video, the lid is so full of screws that every time I take a layer out, the box tips. But with all of those tools sat in the bottom, it means the box won't tip. It's quite sturdy there. Uh, and obviously this top layer can be lifted out to access all of the uh, multi-tool bits. And what we've done is we've cut them all in, as we said, from like a bird's eye view. So if we get any more of these bits, if the contractor whose box this is gets any more of these multi-tool bits, they can just drop them in on top and there's loads of room for growing the kit. So just drop that in. And that is a finished box. So if you want to organize your T-Stack containers, whether you've got the toolbox, the long handle box like this one, whether you've got the T-Stack drawers, or even if you've got the rolling box with the wheels cut out, we've got inserts ready on our website in six colors and in 30 mil and 50 mil depth. So we do them on next day shipping, and we've also got bulk offers on there if you buy more than one. We've also got free items. If you spend over 50 pounds, you'll get a free cutting kit. And if you spend over 150 pounds, you'll even get a free t-shirt. So head over to shadowfoam.com and get your inserts. And we'll see you next time.